Fox News has a famous or infamous motto. They report, you decide. But on this story that is captivating so many in politics, they reported and they decided. They have been in a meltdown mode over this ongoing McCarthy humiliation. And one thing that's important about this, you may say, why am I watching one channel, see what's on another, is sometimes political stories play very differently in different parts of the country. In fact, we've covered the role of polarization or whether people are getting the facts. This is striking because the level of Republican complete failure is just playing as that everywhere, including among Republican allies on Fox's live programming. These 20 people are making the Republicans look like idiots. House Republicans now are on the verge of becoming a total clown show if they're not careful. Can we get a unanimous vote to go forward, or do we have to do a few rounds? Because without all three of us voting, to go, yes, we're not going to do the show. It's unbelievable what took place yesterday. How ordinary American is sitting home and saying, what the heck is wrong with these people? <laughs> this is the worst game of chicken ever. It's like, if you said game of chicken, you have a car going at the other, and you wait. This is not even that. Uh, it's not even that. It's just bad. This is an utter unmitigated disaster. Disaster for the Republicans. Was. Just a simple disaster. That is how it's being presented. We can get into analyzing why. We have a guest for that, but that's it. No spin, no hook, no democracy is messy talk. No, because this hasn't happened in 100 years, and whatever messiness was supposed to be negotiated, it usually is done before you have that out-and-out -out open public vote. Then Trump has come in with a kind of a last-minute sloppy play where he wrote in all caps that everyone should vote for Kevin, close the deal, Republicans don't turn a great triumph into a giant and embarrassing defeat. That's what Fox says has been happening this week. And that was ridiculed by even former Trump fans like Matt Gates. He's a Never McCarthy guy, and he put out a statement mocking, openly mocking former President Trump, saying it was sad to see his support for McCarthy. We turn now to Obama campaign veteran Che Komanduri, friend of The Beat. Welcome back, sir. Good to be back, Ari. Um, I mentioned that, as we all know, sometimes the stories play differently in different places. Sometimes Fox won't cover negative information, say, about Donald Trump or January 6th. Um, what do you think of the way this is going down, why they don't see any other alternative, uh, and whether that also matters as this plays out for days in front of the nation? I think the way this is going down is a result of a Republican culture that has no interest in governing. We have not heard one thing from either Kevin McCarthy or his enemies in the GOP about what they will do to make the lives of Americans better. Instead, all yep. we hear about is rhetoric about shutting down the government, investigating Hunter Biden, helping Vladimir Putin uh, prevail in the in Ukraine, etc. That is the sort of rhetoric that we are hearing. And it's a result of the fact that the party now is really based on, is really created around online activists, people who are addicted to internet trolling, owning the libs, that the excitement, the drama, the adventure of that. And that has nothing to do with the actual act of governing. So the result is a party, when they actually have to govern, they simply cannot. Yeah, I think you lay that out. We alluded to some of that in our coverage at the top of the program, that there isn't even a, a cursory reference uh, to policy solutions or, hey, here's what we got to do about inflation. Um, what about the other part of the question that Fox is not apparently spinning this completely? Well, I think Fox has a little bit of an agenda here. I would say it's a Ron DeSantis agenda. I think one thing that Ron DeSantis is going to be able to say is this is something that Trump has brought about. You know, this is something that makes Trump look very, very bad. You know, Kevin McCarthy sure. was his choice for speaker. Kevin McCarthy is in the position he is in, largely because he basically decided to, to bet on Donald Trump, and that uh, bet went bust. And Ron DeSantis is going to be arguing over the course of this next year in the GOP primary, hey, look, I actually govern. I govern Florida. Now, I would argue he governs it badly, he governs it deceitfully, et cetera, but he is a governor. He does govern. And he can basically then say, look at these clowns in D.C. I'm from Tallahassee. I'm coming in from the outside, and I have some solutions, et cetera. Wow. And that, you know, you, yeah. being, a, being a political outsider is a huge advantage in our, in our politics. Yeah, as you say, I mean, we, we pointed out in our introduction that Trump is losing this. He's also been exposed as someone who can't move votes. 
uh, even to what exactly. was supposed to be the majority position in the Republican Party, let alone independence of the rest of the country. So it's another uh, way to expose his weakness, which, as you say, is something that the Murdoch uh, folks have tried to do over at Fox. So to that sense, in that sense, it's just aligned the, the, the true story aligns perhaps with their self-interest. Then you have them just the yeah. whole sheer McCarthy of it. I want to play briefly here Howard Stern talking about how McCarthy wants it almost too, too badly. Take a listen. This guy has wanted to be the Speaker of the House forever. It's poor bastard. I mean, you feel bad for him in a way. The reason the dude can't become Speaker of the House is that these Republicans have let in so many kooks that the kooks will not vote for him. And I think this guy wants it so badly that it's kind of fun not to give it to him. Smaller point, but how do you contrast, say, uh, McCarthy, who'll say and do just about anything to say a, a Bernie Sanders or a Paul Wellstone, where their, their appeal was that it was real? Everyone knows McCarthy doesn't believe half of what he says because he's said the opposite in the past. Yeah, I mean, what has happened is, is McCarthy basically made made his bet on people who wanted to own the libs. Now, those people who want to own the libs want to own him. And that is exactly what has happened. It's come, The chickens have come home to roost, uh, to use a famous phrase from the movie Malcolm X. Uh, and that basically is what has occurred here. McCarthy has been sort of hoisted on his own petard. You know, it's basically that's, you know, all those analogies are very, very accurate here. McCarthy has created the situation. And the thing he wanted most is now appears to me fully out of reach. Yeah, we're running out of time, but if the chickens have come home, do you think he can pull this out, or do you think his goose is cooked? Oh, I think his goose is very much cooked. I, I don't think we're going to see a speaker, Kevin McCarthy. Um, I do think you're going to see somebody else in that caucus, somebody who uh, may seem to some people in the more moderate wing of that caucus as less explosive, less associated with Trump, someone they can support, and somebody who the Freedom Caucus also thinks that they can control. But it's not going to matter, yeah. ultimately. Whoever the speaker is, what's really going to drive the Freedom Caucus and the House GOP is going to be what is the content that we can create that right. can help fuel Fox News, help fuel, yeah. fuel our internet personalities, et cetera. I think that's a great point. You know, I, I would say, well, if the goose is cooked, you definitely want the leg piece, uh, because he's done so <laughs> much backtracking. So much backtracking that the leg is probably a, a real firm cut, but I think that would be taking the analogy politically too far, Che, too far. <laughs> probably too. And, uh, you know, we've had probably some very good holiday meals recently. This is really uh, a, a meal that nobody wants to eat. It's going to be a very tough year for a lot of Americans. Yeah. I'm glad you got the holiday meals in there. Uh, che, always good to see you, <laughs> sir. Good to see you.